hey y'all it's your girl drea so if you've seen like my very first two videos like my first i mean if you've seen those videos you would know that like i have not been on this in a good minute and honestly i have no excuse for that except that it was just laziness and the fact that like i just seriously just didn't know what to post and for the simple fact that like editing takes a lot of work like nobody understands like editing like if you're if you are a youtuber or if you are in like the video kind of type thing you know that editing takes a lot and like trying to find quality content takes a lot so the reason why i wanted to do this video is because i noticed whenever i tell people that i'm joining the national guard or the army or whatever people always ask me why so i'm like you know what i'm gonna just put it in a video go watch the video and you'll know and this video is about why i chose to join the military and also why i chose to join the branch that i chose to join but before i do that before i get into the video and why we're all here today please go like comment subscribe and share to everybody please do because you know girl trying to get some coins on this other side but not for real though like you know make sure y'all share make sure y'all like make sure y'all comment let's get into the video so okay we're gonna start from the very beginning all right so all right if you are a college student right you know that there's rotc programs out there that is supposed to help you learn how to become an officer for the military that way when you do enlist you'll be ranked as an officer so i got this email from my school and like i said before if you are a college student you know there's rtc programs and the recruiters love recruiting people they love it that's all they want to do they want you to come in the program they want you to do all of that i saw the email and one thing that popped out to me the most was a twenty thousand dollar sign up bonus okay now stick with me here money mm, that twenty thousand dollars i was like oh i could use that yes i can use that give me my money give me my coins so <clears throat> i immediately emailed the person right <clears throat> immediately emailed the recruiter i was like you know because he he had this uh thing that you could link that you could press the link and then you could basically you know do like a, a thing but me i'm to the person i want to know what i'm getting into when am i getting into it why am i getting into it and i would like to know all the benefits the cons all of that i need to know everything so what i did was instead of waiting for him to email me back i just called him so i called the number that was attached to the email and i was like you know i called him and i was like hey you know i'm interested in this program but the thing is i don't really know that much about it and i would like to learn more so if you're a college student, you know that if you are gunning for the army, that they try to push you to go to the reserves. That way, because, you know, you can stay in school and still work. Boom. What they don't tell you, though, is that if your area or like if your MOS or wherever you're um, stationed at, if they get called to do something, you have to go which means you will end up because then you will be all right so if you get deployed you are now working as an active soldier right if you are still reserved that means you're like part-time so you're not really you know getting the gain the benefits of active so the thing that i had trouble with was the fact that like if i'm in the middle of a semester i don't want to have to stop my classes to go all the way to the middle east to you know so i called the recruiter i asked him a few questions he answered my questions and then it just went from there so we set it up we set up a meeting to meet so that way i can take a practice aspect and we can start getting paperwork together and you know start thinking about what mos's i could possibly go for and if you don't know what mos's are they're basically just jobs that's just what it is so when i went to the recruiting office right he was a cool guy i'm not gonna say his name on camera i'm not sure if he's cool with that or not so i'm just gonna you know we're just gonna call him sergeant by his rank that's his rank he was a sergeant he um so it was me and my boyfriend we both 
we're gonna enlist with the army reserve um we took the practice ASVAB I did pretty okay it was like a, I think I got like a 30 something the first time I took it so then afterwards we went back and we started having a conversation and stuff and then we started talking about like you know basic training we talked about all of that stuff and one thing that will forever like stay in my mind until I get to basic and actually experience it for myself is the gas chambers like I'm not ready for that I don't like I've seen videos on it and that's not gonna be a pretty day so yeah that that I'm kind of like but you know you gotta do what you gotta do so after that right I uh, like I think like about a week or so later I was planning on going to MEPS for the Army Reserve but what ended up happening was my boyfriend got on the phone with a recruiter from the National Guard, right? And me and we spoke or whatever. And the reason why, I, all right, before I get there, so we spoke or whatever. And the one thing I liked about this recruiter, uh, he's a master sergeant. Again, I'm only going to call by their actual, you know, ranks. I'm not going to say their name. Master sergeant, he was so honest. And that's what I like. He was straightforward he was honest and it wasn't no like going around it like you know it wasn't too many i don't know which the other sergeant from the army reserve he had a lot of i don't knows and i don't like that because it's like how do you not know and you know you're a recruiter that's like a lot of things you're supposed to know now to backtrack just a little bit when i went to the recruiting office um for the army reserve i spoke to a girl because at first i wanted to do hr because for those of you who don't know i plan on being a businesswoman i would like to own businesses i would like to own a lot of things you know entrepreneur ceo everything that's me so hr at the time seemed like the best option for the simple fact that you know you're learning how to manage your employees you're learning how to do paperwork all that good stuff so i spoke to the girl and i loved her story you know shout out to her she actually is the reason why i decided to continue going into the military so shout out to her I spoke to the national guard uh sergeant master sergeant and he was just like you know so all right the first thing that they don't tell you is the twenty thousand sign up dollar bonus is not guaranteed okay don't let them fool you that is not guaranteed that only depends on what mos you choose again mos is your job so depending on what mos you choose you may or may not get the sign up bonus so yeah that's you know something i was like wow because he did not tell me that and a lot of the things that he doesn't tell you is that again like i told you if you get deployed you have to go with the national guard is within your state so since i moved from new york to virginia i will only be stationed in virginia and the mos that i'm deciding to choose is definitely not going to get deployed um the only way we'll get deployed is if need be and the farthest i believe i would go is like washington because washington is right there so like it's like basically if the surrounding states need help i'm your girl so to forward a little bit we decided this that same day that we spoke to national guard uh master sergeant we went to go visit him. so i went home i got dressed i did all of that then went to go see him that day we started paperwork with him and I took another practice as fab. I forgot what the score was. I do not remember the score, but I took the practice as fab with him. So then when we spoke and stuff like that, the thing that I liked about the National Guard recruiter that made me want to do National Guard and no other branch was the fact that I felt like he was honest, he was genuine, and I felt like he actually wanted to see me succeed and go further. Know what i'm saying that if you get a recruiter that is bashing you or not bashing you or bashing other branches and like are trying to get you, like trying to sway you away from picking a different branch that is not a recruiter that you want to talk to and i say this to say this because the part the point of a recruiter is to help you find what you need not what they want you to need if that makes sense don't let that go over your head so the thing that i liked about him was that if i felt like the marines would have been a better option for me he would have got me in contact with a, a marine recruiter 
which is great i like that and then even more so because at first i was kind of iffy i was like you know i don't know if i want to do national guard or if i want to do reserve for the army so one thing that kind of turned me off from the army reserve was the fact that the sergeant from like the recruiting office was trying to sway me away from wanting to do national guard and i did not like that like he tried everything in his power like he would call me every day a college student and you're planning to go to the military i would say national guard is your best choice for the simple fact that they pay for 100 percent of your school and you get a fifty thousand dollar debt um forgiveness thing i forgot what the name of it is but you get that so i like that um i'm not rich i don't want to be in debt for school i'm not trying to be broke i'm trying to be rich i'm not trying to look it trying to be it so it was that so then and i i've actually spoken to a girl who's in the reserves who was like you know i wish i would have done national guard because she can only take two classes and it took a lot for her to be even able to take those classes for the simple fact that you know you have to work she's on base she has to work so it's not like you know national guard you only go two weekends out of the month to your base and you go back home that's it that's it and i don't mind that right so then i'm not sure if all branches do this but i know the army does this where if you have time in jrtc or if you had time in jrtc depending on how long you are were in jrtc you can come in at a different rank which is cool so i believe I would be going in as either E2 or E3 just because I did just see this. With the National Guard, right, I'm not sure. I don't remember if the Army did this, but I know the National Guard Army, they did this where you can either take the ASVAB at home and then when you get to MEPS, you can take a like, like a 20-hour confirmation test or you can just go to MEPS and take the test. So what I did was I took the ASVAB at home and the ASVAB is basically just testing you on, you know, math your comprehension skills uh mechanical all of that good stuff see like what jobs you qualify for right so the first time i took it um i think i got like a 40 like a 40 something no i got a 48 right i got a 48 on the ASVAB the first time i took it and then after that like he gave me an option to retake it but i did not want to retake it because you know i like to play it safe so i'm like you know i got the score that i needed to do hr i'm gonna just do that but the thing is when you one thing you should do like after you take your ass back and you get your score and all of that look to see what jobs you actually qualify for because you should not stay stuck on just one job because you may end up seeing a job that better suits you or that you may end up working a lot better and that's one thing i love because the national guard has a lot well the army general they have a lot of jobs like it's not only infantry where you're going to war you have you could be well, basically like what i'm doing i'm gonna be a paralegal uh 27 delta then i'm gonna then you could have been a 42 alpha which is hr and so on and so forth there's a lot of things that you can do in the military not just you know throw bombs or shoot guns there's a lot of stuff so it was that and then the fact that like you know all right, so after, all right, so after I took the ASVAB, I got the 48 the first time. And then what happened was, some, I guess something was down with the system, so the test didn't count. So when I went to MEPS the first time, I had to retake the ASVAB, which is fine because I ended up getting a 52, which is amazing. And one thing that they will tell you and let you know is that, and this is kind of the reason why he wanted me to retake it and try to aim for a better score, was that say all right say if you get like a 50 or better on the ASVAB you will be entitled to I believe it's called the GI Bill which gives you $600 extra in your paycheck for you you know being in school and stuff so that would help you pay for books if you have to or you know anything of that sort and that you need for school you, you know use that so I got that and then also too if I would have gotten below a 50 but I would have enlisted for six years then I would have still gotten that. So it's between if you get six years or if you score a 50 or more in the ASVAB, which is great. They, they love giving money. One thing about working for the National Guard instead of the Army itself is that the Army is for the whole country, right? So they don't 
they don't get as much money as the national guard does because it's for the state so they get money from the government and from the state as well they are also state funded which means they get extra money which is going in your pocket take that money the reason why i'm doing the national guard is because you know for one i'm in school paying for school is not something like you know that you want to do and it, the thing with me was i took out a lot of loans for school and i did not want to have to be in debt to school and paying back all those loans that's a lot like just for one semester i have two thousand dollars already in loans and those add up after a while and then you know as soon as you come out of school they are they like six months after they start putting that those that interest rate on you, you know so that means you're you're continuously paying for school and that's something that i do not want to have to do that's one two i'm trying to get my own car i'm trying to get my own place and i'm trying to just set myself for the future because being in the military jobs love that jobs love people who are in the military they are you are more likely to get hired at a job by the military right and also too like depending on what job that you're applying for as a civilian like you're like if you do a government job and they need a secret clearance the, some of the MOS's that you have in the National Guard and the military in general they already give you a secret clearance so that that's like pushing you ahead of the game already for a, a civilian job a government job whatever job that you're looking for because they already see that for one you already have a security clearance when so after basic training right so you go to basic training for 10 weeks and then after that you go to your AIT I believe my AIT is like about 10 weeks in like a few days and the classes that you take for AIT can be turned into college credits yes they can be turned into college credits so if you like me took off a semester I took off this semester so I can go to basic I can get everything off the way then you're kind of low-key in the back so that kind of pushes you to be able to you know get those extra credits and to not have to you know stay in school later because I'm already gonna be taking summer classes to you know catch back up and all of that but to have those extra credits with me helps a lot so like say if for your civilian job you want to be like you know for instance I'm, I'm i'm gonna be doing paraview that's the MOS that i'm gonna be choosing so for the classes that i take i can use those credits towards my college and i could end up changing my major to a paralegal major and i could come out as a paralegal and not even that when i come out of the military i could be working in a law firm while in school that's more money right there like nobody could tell me that's not great then military discount is real like i'm not saying that at all that's not the reason why i joined it all i already told you i joined because of school but military discount honey that is going to add up like if you get a discount for being in the military thank you i'll take that appreciate it that like i don't know like it's just to me it's just so many benefits and it kind of outweighs the negative like i really have not really found any negative all the only thing i would say though is don't rely solely on your recruiter for information because they're not going to tell you everything they're really not they're going to hold back a lot because they want you to recruit that's why it's really good to find a recruiter that's actually for you and is actually going to help you get what you need and not what they want you to need so be on the lookout for that so like one thing i did was I watched a lot of YouTube videos on different MOS's, on what basic training is like, on what I would need for basic training, you know, how to conduct yourself as a female in basic training because, you know, females, we get that monthly thing, you know, certain things are just, just different for guys. We have, you know, a little extra maintenance, if you feel what I'm saying. So, it's that, and it's just all in all just being prepared because... Like I said before, they're not going to tell you everything. And it's best that you go in knowing what you're going into than to go in half knowing. You know what I'm saying? So it's stuff like that. So yeah, don't let other people's opinions kind of sway you from what you may want to do or what you may not want to do. Because somebody else may love it. Somebody else may hate it. It all just depends on the experience that they've gotten from that place. You know what I'm saying? So because I plan on vlogging when i go to meps um tomorrow 
so yeah as far as like meps goes and the dress code goes i will get more in depth with that with the vlog so stay tuned for the vlog also don't forget to like comment and subscribe again and make sure you add and follow all of my socials which will be in the description box below thank you peace out